Hello and welcome once again. My name is Spiro and in this video I'll be presenting the demand management capabilities of Microsoft's Portfolio and Project Management Solution, PPM for short. I will show you how new initiatives can be created and supported by this solution's SharePoint based platform workflow feature. Leveraging workflows are helpful to organizations who are seeking to standardize, guide, manage and track adherence to their portfolio and project management processes. The project lifecycle that we will be supporting in our demonstration is illustrated here with the Create, Select, Plan, Manage, and Close phases. In this video, I'll be focusing on the Create phase. There are other videos on my YouTube channel, for example, Portfolio Analysis and Resource Management, that go through and present the various features available to support initiatives at these other phases, example, Select and Planning phases, respectively. In the Create phase, I will begin by selecting the type of initiative I wish to propose. We will see my proposal reviewed and accepted, and proceed to the Define stage where I provide information that will enable me to complete the final requirements for the create phase and allow the initiative to proceed to the next phase of our project lifecycle. We're now on the Project Web App homepage, and that's PWA for short. On the left, we have our quick launch menu that enables us to navigate through this interface. In the middle, we have what is referred to as the carousel, with tiles that enables us to easily find things we are interested in, such as creating a new project or suggesting one. Note this interface can be customized to suit an organization's or group's needs. Let's click on the Create or Import Projects tile here on the top left corner of the carousel to commence our process. On this screen, we are presented with the various project types that we are granted permissions to initiate. I'll go ahead and click the New Project Development tile here and go to the Finish button at the bottom left of my screen to confirm my selection, which will bring up the Project Information screen next. Go ahead here and enter the name we want to give our idea or project. We can add a description and provide a proposed start date. Once we completed entering this information, we click the finish button on the bottom of the screen. This will take us to our project's workflow status page. On this page, we are provided with information about our project or our proposal initiative, as is in our case. Starting from the top, we are provided with a status which indicates that the project is checked out to me. It is evidence here that SharePoint is helping here manage the access to our project files. Just below, we are provided with a graphical representation of our workflow stage status for our resilient pothole compound project. It's indicating that we are currently within the initiate gate stage of the create phase. There's a decision point that follows and is represented by the diamond. And just below this is the narrative about a workflow status, which says that there is no action needed from me and that it is waiting for review and what I should expect if it is approved or rejected. The artifacts required for this or any stage for that matter of a workflow will be shown here as well. We can see that the project information status is set to complete. These artifacts are called project detail pages or PDPs for short. We can easily navigate to such pages either by clicking on their page name here on the workflow status page or from the top left above the quick launch menu where we can see that a project site has also been set up for this initiative. I will navigate to the project site later to give you a quick peek of this SharePoint based project portal which can be used for example to collaborate with your stakeholders. Now given that there's a review to be performed at this stage of the workflow I'll go ahead and play the role of the approver. The approver can easily be set up to receive alerts and emails to bring attention to such reviews that he or she is called upon to perform. In fact, we have such an alert here on this page at the top right represented by the bell icon. I'll go ahead and click on my notification which states that I have a new task assigned to me titled initial gate approval. I can click on this notification which will cause Outlook to present me with my new task which I can use to take me to the page where I can render my decision to approve or reject the resilient pothole compound proposal. Take note that the approver will have access to the artifacts required to perform the review. Also note that the workflow demonstrated here is a simplistic one for demonstration's sake. As indicated previously, workflows can be set up and designed to meet the needs of any organization or group. Here we see our task name, start date, due date, and the percentage complete for which we can edit. Once we click approve, down here, it will set it to 100%. We are now presented with the project server workflow task list where we can peruse pending or completed tasks. 
Scrolling to the bottom will show the approver's resilient pothole compound task set to complete it. I'll return now to our project workflow status page where we can see that the graphical representation of the workflow has been updated to reflect that we have successfully moved from the initiate gate to the define stage. We can also see the select phase is next, but before we can proceed to that phase, we must at the very least complete the project details and strategic impact PDPs. If we scroll down this page, we will notice that at the bottom, there's a section titled All Workflow Stages. We can expand this section, which reveals all the phases and respective stages in the workflow for the new product development project type that we chose when initiating it. Each stage for our initiative clearly indicates the state it's in, that is, if it is completed, in progress, or not started, and the date and time the stage was entered into, and when it was completed, if applicable. In order to help us move along in this workflow, let's scroll back up and proceed to complete the project details PDP next. Beyond the name, description, and start date that we entered earlier, you may notice that there's a calculated finish date, an owner, which happens to be me, the admin, and some other custom fields. So let's go ahead and populate them. I'll begin by entering a justification. Followed by total benefits, which happens to be a required field, given that it has a red asterisk after the field's name, and then total cost. followed by a risk rating by choosing from the drop-down. With these entries, I will proceed to save our changes. Next, I'll take you to the schedule PDP, which according to our workflow is an artifact that does not have any required fields. It is this project plan that drives and determines the project's finish date that I pointed out a few moments ago. This project plan was derived from a template that was associated to the new product development enterprise project type we selected at the onset to initiate this proposed project. The scheduling functionality in PWA is a light version of the Microsoft Project Professional or Project Pro for Office 365. Some of the similarities that it offers us is the ability to display the critical path as displayed here in the GAN portion of the view. We can also manage the timeline portion of the view. I'll go ahead and select three tasks here and then click Add Task to Timeline. The task that I've selected are represented in length by duration and their position according to their start date. I can also enter new tasks and I can name it. Enter duration, a start date, and assign resources. I can also set dependencies. I will set a finish to start dependency from the first task, which happens to be a milestone, and our newly created task. I can also change the level of detail by using the set outline level. There's also zoom in and zoom out buttons. I will zoom out to allow me to display all the Gambart details for the entire schedule. PWA can help me quickly navigate to the beginning of a Gantt bar that may be outside the time scale displayed. I could use this scroll to task button to do so. Let's click save and proceed to complete the required strategic impact PDP. Here we evaluate a proposed project against the strategic business drivers that have been defined. Example, expanding it to new markets and segments, improve customer satisfaction score, etc. We will give a ranking for each of our drivers. This will help us make a determination later in the selection phase when we have to decide which projects we are going to commit to. Please refer to the portfolio analysis video that I've created for more details on this and how PPM can support your selection phase. I'm ready now. I've made my selections and I will save them. With the updates just made to the project details and strategic impact PDPs, I'm ready to return to the project page where I can show you that these artifacts that are required at this stage of our workflow are now set to complete. And before I proceed to the next phase, let me show you that we're still in the define stage of the create phase. By clicking commit button, I'm ready to have the workflow move this initiative into the select gate.
Along with the schedule and other PDPs I've shown you, I'm also set up with a project site that helps to enhance my team collaboration experience. Enterprise project types such as the new product development choice we made at the onset determines the design and contents for this portal. Aside from storing things like key project documents, we can leverage the site to track risks, issues, communicate our key deliverables and their associated commitment dates, just to mention a few of the things that could be beneficial for a project. That's it folks, I hope you enjoyed my demonstration of the demand management functionalities available with PPM. Thank you for watching.